Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Chelsea Reber. Today we are talking about contract training and customization. And on the show with me today is Eric Duell. He is the Senior Director of Manufacturing for Fujifilm Biosynth Biotechnologies Texas. And we've got Jenny Ligon also on. She is the Associate Director of NCTM. If you find this video helpful or interesting, please leave a like below and comment your favorite parts. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Jenny, I'm going to start with you because I think we need to just kind of get the definition out there. What is contract training? Okay, so this is something that is very much in demand um, for this industry in particular because it's changing so rapidly. <laughs> and it, um, what, we, what we have and what we've built over the, the years of development and, and curriculum um, training program building, we have a, a ton of off-the-shelf training. We have about two dozen courses, about 250 to 300 individualized modules. And the benefit of those individualized modules is that we can kind of cut and paste to match what a company's needs are, okay? So every pharma company is going to, biopharma company is going to have their own proprietary internal processes. And they're not going to give that away because that's their secret sauce. But we want to try to get them as close as possible and get people trained so that they can add value as soon as possible. And so that's where the customized training and the contract training kind of piece comes in there. We um, listen to companies with their specific needs and we say, okay, you need this, you don't need that, you need to cover this, and we don't need this, and we can cut and paste and piece together um, a customized program for them. So we we try to match what they're doing in-house as close as possible. So what does the process look like to get into your training program? It's quite simple. A company will approach us and say, we need to bring on X number of people, or we need to train X number of people, and what do you have to, to help us out with that? And we literally have a database of modules that they can pick through in every unit operation that they have in-house. They can say, I need this, I don't need that, I, I need this unit operation, we don't do column packing, we do do bioreactor assembly and steril steaming sterilization, whatever, you know, we have every unit operation that's covered from, from vial to vial is what I like to say. So we cover that entire process and they just come in and it's kind of a laundry list. They check off what they need, we piece it together, we let them know if there's going to be a delay in customizing some things, if there's some some aspects that we've left out or they they did not see covered, then we could do some curriculum development for them. But it allows us to get something back to them very rapidly. Okay. And so Eric, you're here because you've had this experience. Um, so Correct. from the company's perspective, what is the experience like? So I, I think the experience is very positive, right? So um, we, uh, together with, with, uh, with Jenny's team, uh, we really form a, a partnership, right? It's a collaboration between uh, the, the two groups uh, to really get a lot of the, the technicians uh, trained, right? So most of the training that we uh, rely on from, uh, from Jenny's group is uh, for all the technicians that, um, uh, that work at either NCTM, FBF, or, um, or TBF. And um, it's a very positive relationship because we do have a lot of people, especially over the past couple of years where a lot of people joined the company and we grew so rapidly um, that partnership with Jenny's group has really allowed us to very quickly get uh, technicians uh, trained and, um, and on the floor, right? So right now we have, um, every two weeks, we have cohorts that go through, uh, through training for, um, for the initial training for, um, for technicians. So once they, uh, they join the company, they go through an HR training for a couple of days and they're immediately placed into these cohorts um, with Jenny's group. And... Um, and they go through a several week, basically, um, introductory training to what we do on the, um, on the floor. And, um, and then after that training, the, the technicians are released to, um, uh, to us where we go through additional training, uh, that, um, for specialized, basically training in the positions where they will be, where they will be placed. Right. Um, and, um, it, it's, it's really that relationship between the two groups has, has really made it possible for us to. Uh, to grow so quickly and um, and make sure that um, that we have a very compliant and very well trained workforce um, when the um, when the technicians step foot on the floor, right? So it's been very positive. Great. Uh, viewers, listeners, if you have a friend or a family member interested in learning more about biotechnology, please share our videos with them. Jenny, I'd love to know what is the training feedback loop. Okay, so this is something that's very critical. And anybody that does workforce development or training program development knows that you have to have that feedback loop because whenever we deliver our first class based on a brand new compilation of unit operations that we piece together for training, um, it's 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 going to hit, there's going to be bumps, right? Correct. And the reality is, is that um, we've 
We've put through more than 20 cohorts of onboarding for Fujifilm. Wow. And so that's that's over 200 people. And we've done that within about an 18 month period. Right, yeah. um, and, uh, and the good thing about that feedback loop is by the 22nd cohort, we are well-oiled <laughs> machines with that. So we, um, that feedback loop is, and it's iterative, right? So the, we, we request feedback from the participants and that goes to the training department that goes to Eric and, and the rest of his, right. his staff. And they review it and say, okay, this is working. This isn't working and we keep making tweaks. We keep mm -hmm. making those tweaks and then we just it, dial it in. And so that, that allows us to become more efficient, you know, just, just be able to have quicker throughput, you know? Yep. And then also on our end, what we look at is after that training, um, we look to, to basically partner up with Jenny's team to, to provide our technicians with, you know, with more intermediate training, more advanced training, Right. And that's something that, you know, we've thought about over the past couple of years, especially over the past 18 months, where um, where we look at our work workforce and say, hey, what's you know, what's um, what are we missing here? Right. What are it's what, what extra training do we need for our group in order for our technicians to be um, set up for for success when they're on the floor on a daily basis? And we've um, we, we've done trainings that um, that dive in deeper into into the um, the trainings that um, that were performed at the beginning of their employment, right? So there's three main areas in our in our company where uh, one is support services like buffer and media preps. Another one is an uh, an upstream basically um, area and a downstream area, right? So um, and we've 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 contracted with um, with Jenny's group to really do a lot more deeper dives into those areas. So for instance, um, like Jenny was saying the um the, like bioreactors right or potentially like cell expansion type stuff right things that are um that are a little bit more in depth is where we take basically those groups that have a little bit of experience on the on the floor and put them through those trainings in order for them to gain more knowledge mm -hmm. and um and, it, and it's just been uh you know a wonderful experience because we just sometimes we you know we're focused on manufacturing right uh we may not have the the either the facilities to facilities or the the bandwidth to pull people away and do that in-house and it's a it's a perfect basically um addition to to our training program to to really pull them away from that put them in you know in uh in the um in jenny's program and um and when they come back we 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 go through that basically that feedback and say hey did you you know what did you learn what, what's something that we could do um, better for with, with this is this beneficial for us right because um no obviously there is an investment in that sure. right so we want to make sure that um the the investment is is right mm -hmm. and um and we get that payback as far as um uh making sure that our that our technicians supervisors uh managers that have gone through some of the trainings um you know take that back and really apply it to the the daily operations and um, it's going to make you a better technician or it's going to make you a better supervisor, mm -hmm. right? And overall, it's going to make us better as a, as a company. And that's basically that compliment there is, is perfect because we just sometimes we get caught up in that, uh, you know, that daily grind. Sure. And we can't do that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Jenny, you mentioned some bumps. Are there any trainings you were hoping you would be doing that are being held up? Yeah. Well, I mean, the reality is, is as we've mentioned in previous episodes, we are a small but mighty team. <laughs> and, um, and the factor is, is that, you know, there's a bandwidth issue with this training. Okay. Um, you can't put 50 people through a hands-on training. And I think, you know, that's the reality. A cap is about 10, maybe 12 participants per cohort. And so you're always going to hit that bottleneck of a throughput issue, right? We can't just do training after training. We can't do training in the evenings and the weekends. And I'm sure that I'm sure that Fujifilm would be happy if we did. And our, our other clients would be very happy if we could do that. But, um, you know, just I think we we really need to figure out mechanisms where we can serve broader audiences. And one of the things that we've mentioned in, and I think previous episodes, is where we can utilize um, curriculum sharing and curriculum licensing to train other institutions that are in regions that have rapid bio farm growth and just teach them to use our content, you know, make sure that they have the right equipment, the right instructional staff, and just help them be able to multiply the training to serve those those areas, you know, because we there's not, there's not a whole lot of us out there, these educators that put on programs like sure. we do. And so, and we all know that there's a major shift coming in the industry and, and this is the wave of the future of medicine. So we need to try to keep pace. Yeah. Speaking of growth, um, Eric, what are some of the contract manufacturing organizations training needs in the near future? 
in the near future, it's, it's really, I, I think it's that specialized training, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, I think it's, it, it's really a broad spectrum of, of needs, right? You can't just say, okay, um, you know, we're going to focus on this because this is the thing that will get us to the future. Um, but also any other, you know, any other product lines that are, that are became, becoming very or growing, uh, really at a very fast pace, like MRNA, right. Is one, uh, we have a very, um, very robust, uh, MAB group, uh, at, at Fuji down here in, in college station. Um, so that's something that's, um, that I think we will be looking forward to, to really providing those insights for our technicians and for our supervisors, for our managers, right. Is to, to know the in and outs of, the products that they're that they're working on. Jenny, what challenges have you faced in developing the contract training program? I think it's just it's taken a bit for industry to just recognize to invest in this. Okay, because and in and I'm not knocking this industry in the least because being in workforce development as long as I've been with multiple industries, the first thing to go when times are tough is training. That is literally the first thing that always goes. And so I think what is happening is, is a shift certainly in this industry where they are realizing, you know, big pharma, and Erica and I were discussing this this morning, big pharma, they do it in-house. You know, the Mercs and the Pfizer's and the AstraZeneca's and, you know, all of them do it in-house just because they have such proprietary processes and it doesn't make sense for them to outsource all of that. They just do it in-house, right? But you're going to have a lot of the contract development and manufacturing companies, small pharma, uh, mid-sized pharma um, that don't you know, they're not going to invest, first of all, in having that. They're not going to have dedicated labs just to do training in because you don't want to do training in the same space you're doing manufacturing, right? You know, that's just going to contaminate everything. So, um, so the, the, the big thing is, and it, and it really, ha and I think honestly, COVID has just opened up so much of our eyes. It really has to, to the fact that we need people. We need people now. We need trained people. We can't do it in house. We can't do it all by ourselves. And so that's really kind of been the thing is just, it's a awareness, a learning thing. And I think mm -hmm. it's just been industry-wide. Do you mm -hmm. have stuff to add to that? No, I, I think, you know, just, just playing off your comment about a training being one of the first things to go, um, I think it's a wrong approach, right? Obviously, training is, is, uh, is crucial to making sure that um, you go from vial to vial, right? And if you're, um, you know, if you're skimping on training, um, you're going to pay for it in the, in the, in the long term, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it be, you know, the cleanup work, which we call, you know, deviations and, uh, uh, parts of the uh, process that, um, that are involved with this positioning of, of batches and making sure that they're safe to put out to the market, right? So it is really important for us to, to really invest in, in training and making sure that we have, um, very robust training programs, which contract, man con contract training is, is a vital part of, yeah. um, so especially for, like you said, for, for companies that, um, that are, um, that are C, uh, CMO, CDMOs, right. Where a lot of the things that we're developing and working on, on a daily basis, maybe something on a cutting edge, right. So, and, um, and it's something that, you know, some companies may not have the, um, the expertise with, right. So, and right now, you know, being that we're right here at, you know, at Texas A&M, there's a lot of really smart folks that, that participate in this, in this, uh, program that are part of the, part of your group, part of your training. Right. So like what better way to really, um, tap into those resources is, is really contract. Right. And, and not really lose the time with, with, um, with developing maybe some of those, uh, resources in house and, um, and, and really get, you know, get your folks trained and so that they can, um, uh, you know, that they can participate in, um, in, in production or development of the, the cutting edge drugs, right? Besides just the importance of it, which you just yeah. talked to, what is the most important takeaway from your contract training program? I think the most important takeaway is really the amount of, um, the amount of work maybe that's, that, that has been, I would say taken off our plate, mm -hmm. right. As we were growing, uh, so, you know, so, so quickly over the past, uh, at least over the past year and a half, um, so, you know, without that, we, we really wouldn't be able to, 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 to really get all of our folks trained in that, that quick of, uh, uh, a time. So okay. I think that's really the most important, okay. uh, takeaway out of that. Viewers and listeners, just a reminder, if you're interested in doing work with NCTM, you can send us an email at the address below and we'll see what we can do to fill your needs. Um, guys, a couple more things I want to ask before we wrap up, Eric, what are your best success stories from contract training? So from contract training, best success stories, um, you know, sending, sending our, um, supervisors at that time and some of the lead technicians to that class, um, 
I took a little, I think I took a little bit of a gamble with that because, um, you know, those should be the most, uh, experienced folks, right. Uh, that, um, that, that we're basically putting through this training. So they should know that, right. They should know all the ins and outs that you were mm -hmm. actually teaching them in the class. Right. But I said, okay, but I, I'd like to basically standardize our, our super or the knowledge of our supervision, right. Knowledge of our, our managers. And, um, and I want to make, put them through there and I want to assume that they don't know, uh, basically the ins and outs, right. Have them start from scratch, right. So that when they come out of this training, they're pretty much have the same kind of knowledge base, right. Okay. From experience, they, you know, some of them are, are more experienced than others, mm -hmm. but with the basics, they're, they're basically more, um, more, more or less standard, uh, standardized across the board with their, with their knowledge base. And and I've even had some people come up to me before this training. They're like, you know what? I've been in this industry for 20 years. Why are you putting me through this? Right. Right. And I said, just go. Right. I want to see this one. One thing is that I would like to see is kind of what the quality of training is. Yes, right. I knew that was the answer. Of, but yeah, you're testing one kind of them. Absolutely. It's kind yeah, of a, an, an, an audit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, um, you know, like, um, I don't think you should be surprised though. Right? No, no, it's <laughs> fine. I understand. I completely understand. It's, it's, it's the nature we, of the beast. We, we do send people that are like, okay, go over there and, and make sure. Do they that, know what they're talking yeah. about? What they're yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. What does this look like? Right. Um, is this really worth, you know, spending money on? Sure. Right. And, um, this was a, a Monday through, uh, through Thursday, I believe class. And I remember going into work on Monday and several people pulled me aside and they were like, that was the best training ever. Yay! I was like, thank you very much for putting <laughs> me through this. Right. And, um, and I was like, well, what did you learn? Right. And, you know, obviously they're, you know, they're, they're starting off with, you know, the, all the ins and outs basically behind the science and how you guys, d you know, uh, dove right in into a lot of the, the things that they may not know from like the daily, you know, interactions with either the clients or the daily uh, work that they uh, do on the floor or maybe some of the stuff that they, um, you know, experienced in the, in the past. But, um, and, and I had, and at the time it was actually uh, someone that, that I, that I hire higher up and they had about 25 years of, 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 uh, of experience overall through, uh, through, um, uh, big pharma, right? And they're like, this is a really good training, right? Awesome. And um, this is something that, uh, that, that we can definitely take um, a bit further, right? And then with the next training, um, we'd like to put um, our, our lead techs through. And I think at the time it was uh, about a limit of about 10 people mm -hmm. for, the, for the class, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and you guys put them through the ringer, right? I think they were in the labs as well, right? Yeah. Um, on downstairs over here in, um, in the NCTM building. And um, it was very beneficial, right? It was beneficial from, from everyone who has been either through different walks of life, whether they were, uh, they come from a big pharma environment where they're, you know, cranking out the same thing on a daily basis, uh, very familiar with, uh, with a product that they're working with, to people that have a lot of um, CDMO experience where, um, you know, they have a broad experience with a lot of different, basically, either therapies or, or, or drugs, right? So, and I think this morning we spoke about um, the other two classes that you have on the, on the schedule, right? And, um, you know, we're talking about filling those up. I was like, hey, don't, you know, don't forget, we're, we're, we want to put them through. <laughs> know, right? We have more people to put them, put, put through the... Uh... It's not my fault out there. <laughs> all the other companies, Fujifilm is taking up all the spots. <laughs> It's like, yeah, you got to prioritize <laughs> us. We share a building, right? Right, that, right there. That. <laughs> we share a building, so. Um, that actually leads me to a great question because yeah. you guys are right next door. You're right here. But do you do contract training for companies that are remote or, or that are long distance, I guess? Yeah, say. yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that's part of the um, kind of the, the aspect. We, we With another contract manufacturing organization mm -hmm. or CMO, as we refer to them, um, a company that's out of Oklahoma, and they weren't going to send people here six hours away just to send Gosh, hundreds of right. their employees to do a customized onboarding program for them. So we actually did a train the trainer program with them and we licensed the curricula so that they delivered it in-house. Okay. And so we still um, audited the training on an annual basis, biannual basis. We still issued the continuing education units and completion certificates mm -hmm. for them. We vouched for the ability of their trainers, right? They became certified trainers of the curricula. So that is a way for us to obviously serve right. much broader audiences. So we, we can work with educators and curricula share that way. We can work with other companies. Okay. You know, we can mm -hmm. bring them in the house and train them here. Um, but but that is 
clearly an option is also to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes for contract training in the next five years? Um, okay. Yeah. I have a big dream on that. Um, so again, as stated earlier, like we, all of us educators that are out there, we know that we can't serve the industry's needs enough. And so what, what I would like to see more of is that curriculum sharing, that licensing, whether it be with companies, whether it be with other educators. And, and I would like um, to give another shout out to, um, if you've listened to us in previous episodes, um, the National Institute for Innovation and Manufacturing Biopharmaceuticals, NIMBLE, um, has um, funded a project where we are the lead, Texanum is the lead on and NCTM is leading that, where we're working with four other universities across the United States, all minority serving institutions, and we're going to replicate our certificate training program there at their facilities. So um, Nimble's helping them purchase the equipment. We will transfer the curriculum. We will train their trainers, make sure that they're ready to get out there and help them figure out what a recruiting process looks like for students. And hopefully they'll have as much success as NCTM has had um, because this is the industry is just only going to get bigger. Sure, yeah. sure. All right. Well, both of you, thank you so much for joining us today on today's uh, episode of Contract Training and customization. You can learn more about our available trainings by visiting our website at nctm.tamu.edu or by viewing our Facebook page. And if you didn't find a course that fits exactly what you're looking for, check back regularly to catch new courses. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Chelsea Reber for Eric Duell and Jenny Ligon.